The following was originally published in 2018, and while I stand by the critiques of The Last Jedi I make, I deeply regret any direct personal attacks I make against Ryan Johnson, Kathleen Kennedy, or any other employee of Lucasfilm. Those comments were made in anger and frustration, and I will do a separate video about that after this series. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today. Remember, Lore Reloaded is still out there thinking that Threshold is the best Star Trek ever. We really need to stop him. Last time on the Anti-Trekker, Leia shot Poe because Poe didn't want to shoot Leia. You know, because Leia's a jerk now. <sighs> Connix and C-3PO surrender to Leia because they don't want to get shot. And we see that the transports are launching. Okay, help me push him up, guys. That one's a troublemaker. I like him. Me too. Oh, fuck you. After all the hate that Haldo put up, including such a ridiculous level of spite as to endanger the plan by not telling Poe when he had a gun to her head, she now is going to lovingly call him a troublemaker? F*** your f***ing bullshit. F***ing... So after Haldo, for some reason, now says she likes Poe, she tells Leia a dark truth. Now, time to board your transport. For the transports to escape, someone needs to stay behind and pilot the cruiser. Wait, well, why? I mean, really, I know I made a big deal out of the autopilot thing with the other ship, but here we have a clear contradiction. Earlier in this film, the bridge was blown up, the entire command crew killed instantly, and yet the ship continued on uninterrupted. Now, I do not know, and there's nothing to say how long it was before the secondary bridge was up and running, but there's no reason to assume that it was manned at the time that the primary bridge was taken out. I know that some of you are no doubt thinking <laughs> but wait, they never said that the secondary bridge was not manned at the time, and it would make sense that during a battle, both bridges would be manned in case one of them was destroyed. <laughs> Which is technically correct, but consider that the Mon Calamari cruiser could hold thousands of people, and from what sources I could find, the Radis is an MC-85 star cruiser and has a minimum, that is a minimum crew of 1,139. And at this time, there were only 400 survivors in the entire resistance. To waste valuable crew members on redundant systems rather than manning various weapons and other mission critical posts would be, well, frankly, even more stupid than I would suggest Admiral Holdo is. And she was not even in command yet. <sighs> All this to say, there is no on-screen evidence that a person would have to stay behind to pilot the Radis until it runs out of fuel, except to try and make Haldo out to be a hero, which I would be okay with had they not made her out to be an insensitive jerk throughout this entire film. Too many losses. I can't take any more. Sure you can. You taught me how. F*** you, Ryan Johnson. Cloaking device activated. We should be off their scopes. Let's hope this works. Yeah, because I'm sure that the cloak will be just fine as long as nobody is actually looking in your general direction. <sighs> Whatever. The Force. So the transports fly off and Leia looks back to see her good friend Haldo standing alone on the deck of the now abandoned ship and... Wait, wait, wait. D just a minute. Why is Haldo staying behind? For the transports to escape, someone needs to stay behind and pilot the cruiser. So if, if somebody needs to stay behind to pilot the ship, who right now is piloting the ship? I mean, it's not like they forgot something from a prior movie or even early in this movie. This is in the same scene that they said someone needed to, you know what, f*** you, Ryan Johnson. <sighs> So the transports, using their cloaking devices that don't really cloak, fly away unnoticed because nobody is looking out of the window of any of the First Order ships. 
<sighs> Meanwhile, in the big red room, Snoke releases Rey from her cuffs. Much like how the Emperor did with Luke. Again, Ryan Johnson, if you want us to like this movie, you should stop reminding us of better movies. But whatever. The dark force butthole. Oh, and look, Snoke is going to put the lightsaber on the right arm of his chair, just like the Emperor did in Return of the Jedi, because Ryan Johnson is an idiot, and he keeps making me wish that I was watching Return of the Jedi. <sighs> On the bright side, I have to say that Snoke is an incredible looking character. I know it's easy, especially in the age of modern visual effects, to get used to this kind of thing, but the artistry of Snoke himself is off the charts. Too bad he's in a stupid movie. Anyway, he continues to taunt Rey, and when she objects, he makes it clear that not only does he know about her visions, it was his plan all along just to get her there. You know, like the Emperor did with Luke in Return of the Jedi. <sighs> you know what? F you, Ryan Johnson. Why is it that after crapping over everything Star Wars, this scene is almost a line-by-line -line copy of when Luke first met the Emperor? I mean, what the... So Snoke begins to torture Rey by, um, making her float in an awkward position, I guess? Honestly, this scene would make more sense if Snoke was shooting her with lightning or something, but I guess that would be too much like Return of the Jedi? Eh? So in the school of Ryan Johnson writing, you can copy line by line what they did before, except for when the really cool stuff happens, take a crap on it. Why not? F*** you, Ryan Johnson. Meanwhile, Poe wakes up in the transport. He freaks out because he knows that they are defenseless. But Leia calls him over so they can look out the window and see Crate, which is um, uh, sitting right there. So like, how, how could the First Order not know that this is exactly where they were heading? I mean... They say it's uncharted, and of course, if it's uncharted, nobody could find it, except that it's right there. If they just look out the window, they are in visual range of this planet, so, uh, whatever, the Force. Of course, they also say the crate is heavily armored, and best of all, they can send a transmission to all their allies scattered around the Outer Rim, which of course, the First Order will pick up so that even though it's uncharted, I'm sure that a distress signal coming from an uncharted planet in visual range right after the last resistance ship was taken out will not raise any red flags. <sighs> Whatever. Koldo knew the First Order was tracking our big ship. They're not monitoring for the transport. We could slip down to the surface unnoticed and hide till the First Order passes. That could work. She was more interested in protecting the light than she was seeming like a hero. So, so wait, I know Haldo was really a super duper hero because she was more interested in protecting the light than looking like a hero, but did she have to be a dick about it? Notice that as soon as they tell Poe the plan, he's cool with it, but nobody thought to tell him the plan before now. Meanwhile, back on the Radis, Haldo is just standing on the bridge and doing nothing. What? Why is she there again? For the transports to escape, someone needs to stay behind and pilot the cruiser. What? Why does someone have to remain behind? Someone needs to stay behind and pilot the cruiser. Huh? She's just standing there. She's not piloting anything. She, she's literally just watching them take off. <sighs> Besides all this, they say the First Order is only looking for big ships. So why do they even need a cloaking device for the little ships? And if they can cloak their little ships, why not just hyperspace jump away in the little ship? Okay, let me guess. Even though the X-Wings and the shuttles all have hyperdrives, the transports don't because plot. Meanwhile, back on the Supremacy, Captain Phasma executes Finn, Rose, and DJ right away. Captain Phasma takes Finn, Rose, and DJ to the torture chambers to interrogate. Captain Phasma marches Finn and Rose, but not DJ, to the hangar bay for reasons. Oh, look, Hux is there because why not? After all, he wouldn't be busy trying to destroy the Resistance fleet or anything. The Dark Force 
butthole. Rose is really crushed to learn that DJ sold them out. Now, I know we're supposed to feel for Rose because she's supposed to be so sweet, but her sweet routine works about as well for me and about as consistent for me as Jar Jar Binks's funny routine. Okay, so here we go. DJ cuts a deal with the First Order with the following. Cut a deal with what? Sir, we checked on the information from the thief. We ran a decloaking scan, and sure enough, 30 resistance transports had just launched from the cruiser. He told us the truth. Will wonders never cease? No. Okay, so in order for DJ to cut this deal, he needed to know that the plan all along was to abandon the cruiser in small cloak transports right before they run out of fuel, which of course would be this exact moment. So how likely is this? Now, my last episode, we clearly established that while they were on the supremacy, the subject of transports did not come up at all. But there's still some debate as to what was known from their earlier conversation. Fortunately, I have this magical ability to go back in time and review that scene so we can all see exactly what DJ did and did not know. So let's take a look. The fleet is running on fumes without a code breaker to break us onto Snoke's Star Destroyer. Okay, so Rose said that the fleet was running on fume. While not exactly a perfect timetable, we could assume that DJ knew that there was not much time left. Oh wait, no, that many are going to cite the, the, this one, uh, this next clip, including Darth Sidious, who in the comments from my last video pointed out, Dude, DJ learns about their plan when they are in the shuttle. Not when they are on the supremacy. Let's see how true that is. Man, all those loading the crew in the shuttle. She's going to abandon ship. Where are you? But we're on our way back to the fleet. We're so close. Did you find the master code breaker? Well, we found a code breaker. We can shut the tracker down. Just buy us a little more time. <sighs> all right, hurry. Okay, yes, they say that they're going to abandon the ship and shuttles. And of course, we have the other, the only other time that any info uh, was while they were on the supremacy and that yielded nothing. Oh, we're almost there. Have the cruiser prep for light speed. Yeah, I'm on it, pal. You just hurry. So it looks like I lose this one, except that I don't. Cut a deal with what? Sir, we checked on the information from the thief. We ran a decloaking scan, and sure enough, 30 resistance transports had just launched from the cruiser. So at the advice of DJ, they ran a decloaking scan when DJ had no knowledge whatsoever of the cloaking devices on the transports, which is the only thing that was going to make the whole plan work. So suck on that, all of you that say DJ knew the plan. Now, I know that some of you no doubt are thinking, but wait, sure, we did not hear him tell DJ about the cloaks, but perhaps they told him off screen. Now, this fails for two reasons. First and foremost, based on Ryan John Johnson's rules. It is evil and wrong to speculate about anything. Therefore, if they do not show it on screen, we cannot assume that it happened. But even if we throw that aside, Poe did not know about the cloaks until after they were on the transports. As for Finn and Rose, they really do not even know about the cloaks right now. Well, except for overhearing the First Order guys talking about them, maybe. So they had no idea. And if they didn't know, how could they have told DJ about something they don't know about? Never mind the fact that the First Order apparently has decloaking scanners that can simply bypass the cloak. So why aren't they using that all the time? Well, maybe not all the time. Maybe just when you're in pursuit of ships attacking attempting to escape and, you know, to make sure nobody tries to maybe sneak off in a cloaked ship? F you, Ryan Johnson. As for those that were insisting that DJ knew about the plan, just tell me how he could know about the cloak that Finn, Poe, and Rose had no idea existed, and I will gladly admit I was wrong. Until then, you can suck my... Mm. Hit the like button, you will. Likes lead to comments. Comments lead to conversations. Conversations lead to understanding. Go to Patreon and support the anti trucker you must, if supporting his videos you want. <laughs> yes, yes, support his videos. Then listen to this at the end of the videos. You will not 